be talking to Joan Marie Fubbs, the well-known ANC politician who's author of two books. The first was Humanity's Covenant with Life and the latest is A New Dawn for Humanity. What prompts you in your busy political life to also write in this way? Well, in fairness, in the first book, three poems were written many, many years ago, like when my 30s. The rest of them were written over a period of three or four years. It included the Marikana period, but it also included recollections of when I was in the union, the National Union of Mine Workers. And I'm sure all South Africans will recall the marches we had when people were just singing away and it was Viva This and they were in solidarity. And then suddenly, factory bosses said, retrenchment, no more increases or whatever the issue. And overnight, factory floors became battlegrounds. And that comes from an expression I heard directly when the factory was shut down. And it is a poem in the first book. And eventually, you know, negotiations are replaced by bullets. And that to me was very alarming. And that is why I wrote in this book something called Factory Battleground, page 13. And it says just that, where you talk about discordant sharp sounds resounding again and again. Factory floors are battlegrounds broken only by bullets. And that was a real incident which papers reported on as news. The other issue which is in here, which later inspired me to persuade the committee to do the National Credit Amendment Act, or the bill as it still is, and that was debt. After seeing people disease written and then in debt and then finally dead, disease, debt and death. And it just seemed life could get no worse. And death, death came almost as a relief. How could South Africans who had this future before them, the Nelson Mandela when he came out, everything was here. We were going to have a new nation of one community. How did we descend to this point where suddenly people could, didn't have funds to buy medication. They didn't have the funds to get to a government hospital to catch a bus, to put petrol in a car. So all of these poems come from that kind of experience. In particular, I am influenced a lot by what I call materialism and the danger that has for humanity. And there's a poem here called Globalization of Indifference. When people become so indifferent to others that the others almost beg to be noticed. And one is reduced to such degradation as I put here, but in the depths of such degradation Something stirred in our unshackled souls, and so the cry for freedom was born in the hearts of the oppressed and dispossessed, searching for freedom. And that comes from the lips of someone who was experiencing it. So the first book, a lot of anger and a lot of sadness in your first book. Now, a new dawn for humanity, 30 pounds, a little bit of a hope and a, a prodding of South Africans to get going and to take the, the new dawn very seriously so that we can move into this new era. You know, it truly was for me, it was a new dawn. And I think for the country as well, it offered everyone hope. Not that a guarantee, but hope that something would get better for them. And I do think that um, 
people, the hundred years that we celebrated Nelson Mandela, the hundred years of Albertina Sisulu, but also Mum Winnie's passing. With this a new dawn for humanity, this can give us a stimulus, this can give us momentum towards a South Africa that is more equitable, that South Africa that realizes the sins of the past and Indeed. needs to try and rectify things for the good of our grandkids. That's exactly it. The very first poem is a new era begins to dawn. And I talk about it beginning to dawn because this was written when I think of it in December when hope for me first came about. And I write here that the essence of our integrity has been tested and distilled. I also write earlier that is the genesis of the values of our full humanity lies deep in our unconsciousness. And it's still there. And what I say further on here, which I think is important, is that our heritage of ill-gotten gains is lost. The Saxon principle of possession and ownership gives us a sense of safety in the status quo. But why, oh why, is our land and our people so restless? But the new dawn speaks to the new people, a new generation. And this is the one that young people love. Young men and women, a new generation stepping out. And I'll go on to point out that their principles have been forged on the anvil of our struggle. And they are against racism, oppression, apartheid, but fighting for human dignity. The one that they like here is the sun will not set on hopes unfulfilled and aspirations not yet met. But tomorrow is in our hands, yours and mine. And at the end, we are building tomorrow today. The breeze is blown away talk because the young people have told politicians, stop talking. Can you please just start implementing something? The breeze has blown away talk, your hands will speak, keeping the promises of a pantheon of principled leaders. Because yes, they do believe that there are some principled leaders, but they say they're almost drowned out by the unprincipled noise of others. That was Krina Media's Polity talking to Joan Marie Fubbs about her new book, of poems, a new dawn for humanity.